Alright, thanks for watching and today I would like to prove a theorem which is in my opinion the most important theorem in linear algebra because without that theorem matrices wouldn't exist and we would be very sad. What's that theorem? I like to call it the linear extension theorem or the linear transformation extension theorem and let me first illustrate it with a picture. Suppose you have two vector spaces, V and W, and let's say you have a basis for V. Let's call it V1 up to Vn. And you have some arbitrary vectors in W. Let's say W1 and then up to Wm. Wn, sorry, and those could be the same, not a problem. Then what the theorem says is that there is exactly one linear transformation that maps each vector here to the corresponding vector here. So such that, you know, T of V1 is W1, T of V2 is W2, etc., etc., up to T of Vn equals Wn. And I will state the theorem in a second, but let me first illustrate it also with an example. So, suppose V is R2, and then your basis is just the basis in this case 1, 1, 1 minus 1. So this is our V1 and this is our V2. And let's say W is R3. And your set here, W1, W2, is just, let's say, 2, 0, 2. And uh, W2, which is, let's say, 4, 0, 4. Very important, notice those vectors are not necessarily linearly independent. So, what this theorem says is that there is exactly one linear transformation that takes 1, 1 to 2, 0, 2, and 1 minus 1 to 4, 0, 4. So basically there exists a unique linear transformation T from R2 to R3 with T of 1, 1 is 2, oh, 2, and T of 1, negative 1, it's 4, oh, 4. And I believe what T does is just T of x, y, I think it's 3x minus y, 0, 3x minus y. Let me just check. So t of 1, 1, 3 minus 1, which is 2, o oh, 2, so that's good. And then t of 1 minus 1, that's 3 plus 1, which is 4, 0, 4. But again, the formula doesn't matter. What matters is... You see, only by only specifying t on those two vectors, we can already see what t is. And in fact, that's all what a matrix is. A matrix just puts all those values, t of 1, 1, and t of 1, minus 1 together, but as coordinates. So it's really because of the following theorem that matrices exist. So let me now state it. and prove it. So theorem so let V1 again let V and W be finite dimensional vector spaces or at least V be finite dimensional so let beta which is V1 up to Vn be a basis for V and W1 up to Wn, be arbitrary vectors vectors in W, and then there exists a unique linear transformation T from V to W such that T of Vi equals to wi for all i from 1 to n. So again, what is amazing is that just by specifying what t does on the basis vectors, 
we can already tell what T is. Which, again, is interesting because linear transformations are very rich. You technically need to specify them at every x, y, and z. But this tells us, no, it turns out just by specifying of this function at three values, you can already tell me what the function is, which I think it's very impressive. And what I like about this is not just the statement. I think the proof is very cute. And so let me prove this. So first of all, to show that there exists such a transformation, we have to give a concrete formula for it. And for this, let's just do some scratch work. Scratch work. The question is, what would t of x be? Now, x is an arbitrary vector in v. So because this is a basis, we know that x equals to some linear combination of v1 up to vn. So if x is in v, then x equals to a1 v1 plus dot 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 plus a n v n for some a1 up to a n scalars again in your field. So press F for field. Then what would T x be? Well, they're not ten thousand choices. They're just one of them. Then T of x would be T of a one v one plus dot 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 plus a n v n. I heard my back is very nice, but I should also show you the math. So let me displace myself a little bit. Now, if t is linear, well, that should be a1 t of v1 plus dot 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 plus a n t of v n. But now remember, what do we want those ones to be? We want it to be, you know, uh, w1 up to w n. So that should be a1 w1 plus dot 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 plus a n w n which gives us actually a very good guess of what t is. Namely, whenever you write x in this form, t of x should be that. So let's define t to be that way. This is t of x. So, first that was part zero if you want. Part one, define t as follows. Whenever x is a linear combination of your v's, and remember this always is always true because we have a basis, t of x equals to a1 w1 plus dot 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 plus a n w n. Now, this is a perfectly valid definition, right? Given a vector in V, T of X then becomes a vector in W, because W is a vector space. The only problem is, how do we know that this is well defined? In other words, how do we know that if your brother or something gives you different choices for A1 up to AN, we always get the same answer. And this is true big bilinear independence, and let me explain why. Yeah, one second. Got the visitor. Yes? My mom had donuts, and she wanted oh. you to have one. No, I'm good, thank you. Okay. Thank you, video, sorry. Okay, thank you. Uh, um, so, where was I? So, how do we know this is well defined? <laughs> Well, uh, in other words, if someone gives you different choices for a1 up to an, how do we know we always get the same answer? Here is why. So well defined. Well, suppose you can write x in two different ways. x is a1 v1 plus dot 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 plus a n v n but also of the form b1, v1, up to bn, vn. So 
to support you. Different choices, again, where the AIs and the BIs are in your field. Well, it turns out those ones have to be the same. So this is a cool thing. Then if you just subtract, you get A1 minus B1. B1 plus dot 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 plus AN minus BN, VN equals the zero vector. But remember now, the VIs, they form a basis. So it's linearly independent. So in particular, if we have a linear combo that gives you the zero vector, all the coefficients have to be zero. So a1 minus b1 equals zero, an minus bn equals zero, and so a1 equals b1, and then an equals bn. Which tells us there's just one way of writing x as a linear combi a combo of those vectors. In particular, what is t of x? Then, in particular, this thing, there's also just one expression. Then, a1, w1, plus dot, 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 plus a, n, w, n. This is how we define t, is b1, w1, plus dot, 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 b, n, w, n. So if your brother or sister comes up with you know, different coefficients, possibly, in the end, you always get the same result. So t of x is well defined. It doesn't depend on your choice of your coefficients. So that's good. So it is well defined. Now let's show that t is linear. Because, well, this is a function. How do we know it's a linear transformation? Well, it turns out because it's well defined, it actually follows that it's linear because of the following thing. So suppose x and y are in v. And remember, if they're in v, we can write them as a linear combo, a1 up to a n, a1, v1 up to a n, v n, and y is b1, v1 up to b n, v n are in V. Well, then what is x plus y is a1, basically you put them both together, a1 plus b1, v1, plus dot dot dot, plus a n, plus b n, v n, and now, how do you define t? Literally, you just replace the vi's with wi's. So just put an extra hat or something. So, well, I don't know what you call it, a wedge or something. So by definition, t of x plus y is a1 plus dv1, w1 plus dot 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 plus a n plus b n, w n. And then, of course, you can expand it out. So it's a1 and w1 plus b1 w1 plus dot 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 plus a n w n plus b n w n and of course this screams to be you know uh, like uh, i want to say factored out but really just put all the like terms together so put the uh, w sorry the uh, the a1, w1 term up to a n, w n term together, and the b1, w1 term plus the b n, w n term together. By the way, I'm completely improvising this. That's why you got to bear with me. But then what is this? Well, it looks like x, except we replaced the v i with the w i. But that's precisely t of x. You see, if you calculate t of x by definition, you just replace this with a w, so this becomes t of x plus t of y. So t at least is additive, and then uh, you can also show that t of cx equals c t of x by the same uh, properties. So indeed, t is a linear transformation, and 
there are just two other things we have to show. Well, we have to show that you know t of v i is indeed w i, but that's not too not, not a big problem. Write that down if you're writing stuff down. Um, well, let's show. T of VI is WI. But here's the thing, what is VI? Well, that's 0 V1 plus 0 V2 plus dot 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 plus 1 VI plus 0 blah 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 plus 0 VN. And remember, how do you define T? You just replace VI with WI. So T of VI becomes 0 W1 plus 0 W2 plus that, 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 plus 1 WI plus that, 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 plus 0 WN. And you see, this is why well-defined is OK. It's very important because you would say, oh, how do we know this works? Well, it works because it's well-defined because it doesn't depend on our choices of concepts. And well, this last linear combination is just, just wi. So t of vi is wi. And last but not least, we just have to show the, that it's unique. And here, unfortunately, we cannot use a formula for t. We have to show it in general. So suppose u and t are linear. And we know u of vi equals v of t of vi or i. Then let's show u equals t. Well, not a problem, so suppose x. So if x is in v, we do know that x can be written as a linear combination. So a1 v1 plus dot 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 plus a n v n for some a i's, again, because v1 up to v n is a basis. Then, well, what is u of x? That's u of a1 v1 plus dot 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 plus a n v n. But now u is linear, so it's a1 u of v1 plus dot 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 plus a n u of v n. That follows from linearity. And lastly, remember, u at the v i's is t at the v i's. So you can just replace u by t. So a1 t of v1 plus dot 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 plus a n t of v n. And you basically reverse what I wrote. So because t is linear in this case, this is t of a1 v1 up to a n v n. But that's just t of x. So indeed, you've shown that u of x equals t of x. So u equals t as linear transformations. And this concludes indeed our proof. And again, why is it important? Because this theorem says to determine a linear transformation, you just need to uh, evaluate t at your basis vectors and the idea of a matrix is simply calculate all those t's at the basis vectors and put them together as a matrix. Except, again, you want numbers in your matrix, so you have to use coordinate vectors. And again, from now on, you can just you freely use matrices, so that's really cool. And again, if you like that, you want to see more linear algebra and math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.